Welcome to the Intuitive Hour with psychic medium, author, and intuitive life coach, Michelle Beltran. The Intuitive Hour will empower you to learn how to magnify your intuitive voice. Listen in and expand your understanding of what it means to be psychic and how to awaken, amplify, and trust your inner voice. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the Intuitive Hour, Awaken Your Inner Voice. I'm your host, Michelle Beltran. As always, it's an honor and pleasure to have you here today. All right, we've got a trilogy of topics today. Orbs, sound healing, and Akashic Records. The first portion of our episode on orbs is by request. An avid listener in North Florida, Stephanie, has asked the question, What are orbs? How can I use them? So then, in response to Stephanie's request, let's begin. So the most popular and familiar use of psychic orbs is actually portrayed in the well-known television series Deep Space Nine. Many of you may know of this. In Deep Space Nine, the High Priestess safeguards ancient orbs known as the Tears of the Prophets. The orbs are mysterious artifacts housed in a decorated box-like arc. Those are orbs which supposedly contain the energies of the prophets, are said to be capable of inducing supernatural effects on anyone exposed to them. They produce an energy vortex that draws in spatial and temporal mental forces. So the real-world applications of orbs, however, are not quite so dramatic as you would expect. In fact, real-world orbs are confusing at best to understand. They are either a physical reflection of light from a physical object, or they're a manifestation from the spirit world. Orbs, which are floating balls of light, usually manifest themselves in photographs. A flash of light hits a speck of dust and illuminates in it. It's a concentration of energy, electrical energy, electrons, or particles of matter that are dense enough to produce a reflection. And, since a camera is set to take a picture of something in the distance, that speck of dust or particle results in an out-of-focus image, so to speak, that looks like a ball of light. This is why dust, insects, and physical world particulars are suspected to be an orb. However, this same phenomenon is often thought to be a spirit attempting to manifest itself. The presence of an orb is often the first thing ghost hunters and skeptics, believers and non-believers, look for as proof of spiritual contact. Spiritual orbs are not usually a visitation method for spirits. Not all spirits choose to visit by creating a visible reflection of light, although it's possible. So do be mindful. While a spiritual orb can appear as light from the angelic realm, other spirits, like spirit guides, for example, prefer signs, dreams, or more direct communication. A spiritual orb is usually a high vibration spirit, a positive loving and natural spirit, while low vibration spirits don't typically appear as orbs, they actually lack the energy to create light. All 
All right. Excellent question by our listener, Stephanie in Florida. Let's move on now to sound healing. And by the way, in our subsequent sessions coming forward in weeks ahead, we will look a bit more into orbs. This is just an introduction discussion. We will have an at-length episode regarding how to use orbs to assist you moving forward in your intuitive development. Sound healing. Sound. It moves us. It has the ability to produce some of the strongest emotional reactions we humans will ever experience. Pure joy and bliss, fear, great confidence and inspiration. You all know it. You felt it. The beauty of sound, the power of sound. Sound can heal us. It's ultimate power. It's used as a treatment for anxiety, chronic pain, and even problems like sleep disorders. Sound therapies are now making their way into conventional medical protocols. And although the medical industry is coming around to recognizing the positive effects sound can have on the body, it has been a healing and calming tool for thousands of years. Himalayan singing bowls have been used throughout Asia in for a millennium or more. Uh, prayer and meditation is also used, co- accompanying sound as healing. Today, Western societies used, use sound to promote relaxation and well-being. The sound of singing bowls, in particular, resonates an energy that vibrates and actually fosters healing. Sound therapists work on the premise that our bodies contain energy frequencies. And it is these very sonic frequencies that can be used to rebalance our energies when they go awry or amiss. There is a belief that since we are made up of different energy frequencies, sound can interact with those frequencies and influence the body's energy mechanisms and output. Dr. Michael Grodin at the Boston Center for Refugee Health and Human Rights is actually using Tibetan singing bowls as part of a therapeutic regimen for relieving PTSD in Tibetan monk refugees. Sound therapy deconstructs music into pure sound. You might think of it that way. It actually harnesses the knowledge that sound has a powerful effect on our emotions. It's ever so important to note that they, that there are interesting studies linking the use of tone sequences for memory improvement and mental clarity. The underlying method is as simple as listening to the particular sounds that enhance blood flow to the parts of the brain that support mental enhancements. Neuroscientists have linked a number of brain regions to our emotional responses to sound. A 2009 study and report from Sweden's Lund University targeted six psychological mechanisms through which emotions may be produced when the brain reacts to sound. Singing bowls are one of the best resources to enhance the sound healing. I would highly recommend Hemisync, H-E-M-I-S-Y-N-C, Hemisync music that can be accessed at the Monroe Institute, an intuitive and psychic development facility. 
shameless plug for a wonderful facility I entirely support. But I would uh, highly recommend the Hemisync music available there in order to access the delta waves in your brain and support sound healing. The process of sound healing and closure here can be a refuge in a world that thrives on pressure and the creation of stress. Consider using the sound healing as an intuitive development support technique. I listen to Hemisync music daily and I highly encourage you to do the same. All right, let's segue right into Akashic Records. This is a fantastic topic coming on the heels of a past life meditation we did in recent weeks. Psychics believe there is a place where every human word or deed throughout all time has been recorded. Those records, a collection of every human event, thought, word, emotion, and intent that have occurred in the past, present, or future. That collection is called the Akashic Records. So this is where past lives would also be recorded. This suppository of information of human consciousness is encoded in a non-physical existence. We would call this the etheric plane. This library of all existence holds the record of your soul's journey from the first time you appeared in the source that you are in the life force until you eventually return home. No matter whether you are a new soul or an ancient one, the Akashic, uh, the Akashic energy, Akashic records is the holographic repository of all your thoughts, feelings, actions, and deeds from each lifetime you have ever lived. As a psychic or an intuitive doing healing work, you will access the Akashic records often. Do read about it, do learn about it, explore it. This is where information comes from intuitive messages and insight. Just knowing whom you were in the past, who you are today, and who you are meant to be in the future influences the life you lead now. It influences your relationships, your belief systems, and the future realities you draw toward yourself. Consider that for a minute. So everyone can access the information from the Akashic Records. There's no secret code or way in. You can access it at any time from anywhere you like. The flashes of intuition and knowing hunches that occur every day that you get, that you receive, are glimpses into that wisdom contained in those Akashic Records. By the way, this has also been called the Matrix or the All-Knowing all that is, all that ever was. It's been called a number of different things. Every being in the universe contributes to and can access the Akashic Records. Because we are all created by and connected to its energy, our divine birthright includes having access to the wisdom and knowledge contained in the Akashic Records. So what can you glean from these records? Well, spiritual guidance and insight, psychic information and images, past, present, future, knowing. It's possible to learn about your relationships, your health, your soul path, and every other conceivable topic. It's all contained here. The answers you receive during an Akashic record uh, reading, for example, or even a psychic reading offers help and support and hope as well as empowerment by knowing the truth of your situation and the possibilities unfolding in your life. So how do you gain access to this information, you might now be asking. So it's quite simple. You just ask. Relax, 
have an open mind and ask. You might do this in a meditative space, before prayer, after prayer, before falling asleep, upon waking, whatever moment feels right to you or you feel the pull and the, the desire to know, ask. You might say out loud, I intend to access the Akashic Records. My question is this. And in that meditative space, listen. If asked before you fall to sleep, then pay attention to your dream and what comes forward. Take on the stance, the belief and the understanding that it's possible to do this. Be open, be aware, be receptive. It's all about surrounding yourself with the most loving and healing energy you can muster. As you enter into a space of receptivity and gain information. Keep in mind, it's also important to feel completely safe in a zone of benign emotions as you are working in Akashic Records. If you feel rushed or unsure about your results or what you're receiving, it will be difficult to re retrieve the information you're desiring. So be open and light and free. Just allow and take your time to concentrate on what you need and desire. Proceed with competence. All right, everyone. A pleasure to be with you today. As always, I look forward to seeing you next week. For any questions, do reach out at 800 607 17 Seven zero. I look forward to visiting you all again soon. Thanks for listening to the Intuitive Hour with Michelle Beltran. If you like what you heard, please share our podcast with a friend. And be sure to visit michellebeltran.com to get Michelle's popular Develop Your Clairvoyance ebook.